Hello, everyone. Uh, can you all hear me? If you can, please type a one in the chat of the YouTube studio, uh, the YouTube chat room. Please type a one in the chat if you can hear me. And uh, based off of that, I will be able to go ahead and get started. It may be a few seconds delayed here just because of how live streaming works, uh, which is pretty interesting. I'm seeing some ones coming in now. So I think uh, as soon as I get a couple more, I think we can go ahead and get started here. Yep. Okay. We're getting a lot of ones in the chat. Um, welcome everyone to the International Research Olympiad live stream. Now this is definitely an informal live stream. Of course, this is nothing like, I guess, an award ceremony or some sort of opening or closing ceremony like we will have for the finals stage of the International Research Olympiad. Rather, this is just because I have this platform as a YouTube channel with a ton of STEM students following me, I thought I would host this call after some consultations with the Student Board of Advisors of the International Research Olympiad, the volunteers, as well as the Board of Advisors. I'm here today to give you guys a lot of questions and answers, uh, advice for the International Research Olympiad, as well as some quick final rules and you know regulations and, and how to for how the exam is going to work. So that being said, I actually want to open up this time for you. And so actually in the chat, if everyone could type in a number, either one, two, or three, depending on one of these three choices. Choice number one is we're gonna start out straight with the questions and answers. For those of you who are dying to you know, ask some questions about how the exam is working, I have all the information right here. And on the back end on Discord, actually, I, I, I am connected with our team as well. So we'll be able to answer any questions on the spot. Number two, we will be able to talk uh, about some advice for taking the International Research Olympiad exam if you're planning on taking the OPENS exam later today um, or you know tomorrow morning. Um, alternatively, uh, option three, we can actually get into the rules and regulations for how the exam is going to work. So that being said, right now, if everyone in the chat room could type in one of the three numbers, one, two, or three, depending on what you want to start with, we can go ahead and get this live stream really kicked off here. Um, and so it may take, once again, a few seconds for me to actually see some of the numbers on the side here. Uh, it looks like people are, you know, sending some emojis and reactions. Oh no, uh, looks like I kind of like locked myself out of the chat here. Um, actually, that is one thing that I, I do want to discuss real quick. Um, for all questions that we will be talking about in today's live stream, um, this is all going to be addressed through the International Research Olympia Discord. And this is so we have a record of who's asking the questions and the questions that everyone asks. Um, and so then as a result of that, we can later refer back to those questions. If anyone you know, wasn't able to attend here, for instance, it's 4 a.m. in their country, they'll be able to see you know, the Q and A's and the questions that you guys ask. So I am pinning the Discord link, um, which you can use to join uh, the, the Discord server where you can ask questions in this channel. Um, and we will go ahead and address that. So that being said, let me scroll through the chat here. Let's see what you guys have been saying. Um, I do see a lot of twos um, and a lot of ones as well. So I, I think there might be a little bit more twos than ones. So let's go ahead and get started with advice that I have to give you all for the International Research Olympiad exam. Um, so it uh, looks like here is the International Research Olympiad website. As you can see over here on the right hand side under the Student Center, um, especially for students, I, he I heard some mumbles in the backgrounds of the Discord and some other places that some students haven't actually, um, you know, completed the, the curriculum that we've given or some of the mock exams. And so this truly is some last minute studying, I would say. But if you haven't already, make sure you read through the curriculum and go through as many mock exams as you can. Um, these are practice questions and practice papers. Just to confirm, the exam will have four research papers along with eight questions being asked per research paper for a grand total of 32 questions. Um, so that being said, what advice do I have to give you all for this exam? Um, so the first thing that I, I have to say is, you know, 
quickly answering questions. We've designed this open exam to not only, of course, test those analytical and critical thinking skills, but we've made it extremely difficult in the sense that there's a constant time pressure. Um, earlier, our team was debating about whether a 90 minute sort of length would work better as opposed to, let's say, a 60 minute length. But we decided on the 60 minute length to provide students with a, you know, a short enough span so that um, it, it really everyone is accessible to, to take this exam rather than, you know, uh, taking up a few hours out of someone's school day and they're not able to participate. But in addition to that, we really wanted to make it very difficult under this time pressure so that only students who had truly studied an extensive amount and had a lot of experience reading these research papers and, you know, quickly being able to extract important information and make, you know, judgments based off of that, come up with criticisms of the paper and ask appropriate questions as well, would be able to succeed. So one of the biggest pieces of advice I have for you in this regard is to really, really focus in on time. You're going to have 60 minutes, keep a track of your time throughout the entire exam. And as you're going, you know, keep checking your time and making sure that you're on pace to finish the exam. If there's a question or a paper that you're really stuck on, I would advise skipping around. One of the big pieces of advice that I give, um, for those of you who actually follow my YouTube channel outside of the International Research Olympiad, I've made some videos about other tests like the ACT and the SAT. And one of the biggest things that I tell students there is that you wanna you know, pace yourself on some of those math problems especially because they can get more difficult. Um, and then in the reading sections, you, know, you really wanna focus on identifying which papers or which passages you wanna target first and then answer those ones appropriately, the ones that you're most familiar with and most comfortable with uh, before moving on to the ones that are, maybe are a little bit harder. And so similarly, when our team, when I took the, uh, the actual opens exam of the IRO, um, you know, after we had finished creating the exam and uh, revising it and getting feedback on it, when I finally took this polished version of the exam, something that I realized that would be incredibly helpful is starting with papers that I think I would just be a little bit better with. Let's say as you were practicing, you, you happen to read a lot more biology papers. Well, naturally, you're going to be a little bit more familiar with the writing style that's used in biology papers as opposed to, let's say, distributed representations of words, right? And, and some, you know, natural language processing and machine learning type of papers. And so as a result, I would recommend you start with the paper that you think is your strong suit. And once again, really pace yourself, keep track of that time and make sure that you're answering as many questions as possible. Now, another thing there, um, speaking of answering as many questions as possible, is the actual scoring and how you know we, we plan to score the exam and, and attribute points to students. There is no penalty for wrong answers. Um, that means you should aim to answer every single question by the end of the test. And in fact, we highly encourage you to do so because we want to make sure that, you know, every student is utilizing the strategy of just simply guessing. Um, and so let's say you have five minutes left and you still have a whole paper to go through, quickly skim the paper and just answer as many questions as you can, right? You really want to go for making sure you answer all the questions and there's no penalty for guessing once again or incorrect answers. You can only get points based off of the questions you got right. Now, one of the biggest questions that I, I have been getting in the Discord, uh, a lot of people have been tagging me here and there asking, hey, Rishabh, you know, um, or, or the rest of our team saying that um, what are the point distributions for the questions going to be like? For instance, on the mock exams, we noticed that some problems are labeled as hard problems, other problems are labeled as easy problems, and the same thing can be said about the, the problem of the day um, that we have in the Discord server. Um, and so what we ended up deciding on is actually uh, probably a little bit less of a traditional model. It's a non-traditional model for grading the exams. And what we plan to do is distribute points based off of how other students are performing on those questions. And the reason behind that is because it will allow us to very effectively um, scale the exam or potentially curve the exam based on how students are doing. If there are one or two very complicated questions that are, you know, there, there might be some clever trick to it that 
you know, a few students got, but the vast majority of students are getting wrong, we can curve those questions appropriately. And similarly, if there are questions that everyone's getting right and our team deemed these as easy when writing the questions, we're going to you know, weigh those a little bit less in the overall uh, calculation of scores for the exam. Um, so that's just something to consider. Something to remember is you know, how the point system works for the International Research Olympiad. Um, and then the final thing I have to say is actually not necessarily advice about taking the exam itself, but about what's next. So a lot of people have been asking about the semifinals and the finals exam, and we are hard at work to ensure that these opportunities will be amazing for the students that participate. Um, and I just want you all to know that this Olympiad is, I would say, very non-traditional. Uh, once again, the, this Olympiad is a non-traditional science Olympiad. So we're not going to see exact structured ex like exams at every single level. There's not going to be multiple choice questions at every single level. At some levels, you may see FRQs, SAQs, um, essay-based questions, you know, even potentially recording-based questions where you have to voice your opinion. Because we believe that research is not just about sitting there and, and really taking an exam. And that's one of the biggest pieces of advice we got from professors when we were forming our board of advisors was that these sorts of exams shouldn't just be solely focused on um, you know, answering specific questions, memorizing things from a textbook, and regurgitating them out, it should be genuinely being able to understand things at a conceptual level. And so while the OPENS exam is very fast paced and, and we're doing this to really be able to eliminate a large number of students, which we can then have move on to uh, the semifinals exam, a semifinal stage of the International Research Olympiad. Um, while we are doing this, just keep in mind that for future exams, it is going to test innate research abilities and skills. And that's why in the initial curriculum that we've developed, by the way, this is the open exam curriculum, um, we are really focusing on students. You need to learn how to read papers, how to conduct a literature review. This is going to come in handy in your careers. Um, on a more personal note, as a student here at Harvard, um, one of the things that I've discussed with the International Research Olympiad team, with professors on our board of advisors personally, was that when I started to take college level courses here at Harvard, one of the things I realized was that that ability to quickly synthesize information from a research paper, from a very high level paper that maybe you don't even have a full understanding of the field, is, is very important to make an informed decision and to also just you know, learn science and, and understand things around you. So that's why we've really focused that on that skill in the open exam. The semifinals exam will also be testing upon these skills, but new ones as well, which we hope to introduce to you very soon. Um, now, that being said, we've finished with the advice portion, I guess, of this live call. So I'd love to hop into questions and answers now to um, answer whatever questions that people have. So we're going to start straight up from the top here. Um, First, someone asked, I was wondering if there's a secure lockdown browser when testing, also when do results come out? These are great questions. Um, about the secure lockdown browser, no, there is no secure lockdown browser. Information about login details for the IRO were sent via email just a little bit ago, so I would advise you to check your spam if you haven't received those. You should have received a username and password for the IRO exam. As you can see over here, this is the IRO exam portal. For those of you, please check your emails. Um, we did send this to each and every one of you, so you need to contact us as soon as possible if there's some sort of issue here. Um, you will be able to log in using the email and password that was sent to you. I'm not gonna log in, obviously, because I don't wanna leak someone's credentials here, but you will be able to log in and then view all, a lot of rules as well. And what we advise is that you actually um, log into the exam center uh, at least five to 10 minutes before the 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, um, whatever that is in your country or your time zone, um, so that you do have ample time to actually acclimate to the exam environment and also look at those rules. Um, so some additional questions here. Uh, when do results come out? Uh, this is to be determined, but I imagine we will be able to parse through results very quickly. Once again, this is a non-traditional Olympiad. We're not going to spend you know, months trying to grade some exams or weeks trying to grade some exams, we should be able to do this very quickly. And we'll also be able to provide full transparency in terms of, you know, what does the distributions look like in terms of what questions students are getting right or wrong, which should be very interesting to look at. Um, also, how does scoring work? What happens if there is a tiebreaker? Uh, this is a great question. 
we're going to base this off of a reciprocal formula that our team has came up with. Um, for those of you who have competed in Olympiads or Bulls in the past, you may be familiar with what happens when there's tiebreakers, either there's a head-to-head -head matchup. In this case, in this Olympiad, we can't do that. So we use the next alternative, which is to look at the reciprocals. So we basically take the questions that students either got right or wrong, look at the comparisons to other students and see you know, if they got those same questions right or wrong to determine which questions were the hardest. And we'll use that and in, in factor in that to break ties. Um, what if I don't have a camera nor a microphone? Um, so we wanna make the exam as accessible as possible. Um, the exam environment will require you. Uh, it will request your um, camera and microphone to be on. Of course, if you don't have a camera and microphone, then there's nothing that can be done about that. You won't be disqualified. How do the two exams work? Can I decide which one to take? Absolutely. So we've decided to basically create two completely separate exams. Actually, I'm not sure if I was supposed to tell you that, but I guess I just did. So we've decided to create two completely separate exams, one that will be released at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time today, and one that will be released at 8, uh, or sorry, 8 p.m. tonight, and one that will be released at 8 a.m. tomorrow. Um, and so that's to incorporate for time zones. Students should only take one of these two exams. Whichever of the two that you prefer, go ahead and take that exam. Um, Is there a reason the second practice test is already answered? The answers seem to be highlighted already, skewing the student's practice. Yes, um, this may have been an issue with students actually uh, basically tricking around with um, the actual file that we've we put in here. And so I believe that um, I will I will forward your message to the content team. I per, I actually don't see this currently um, on mock examination two. Uh, perhaps this issue was already resolved. But um, I believe there was on one of the files, students were making comments previously on some of it and it was popping up, but don't worry. Um, I think that issue has been resolved by our, our, our development team. Um, so uh, I'm going to answer some of the most like, I guess, highly asked questions since we don't have a, a lot of time here. Um, so this is gonna be a big one. Can you search for definitions of words? Um, so the answer to that is actually no. And the reason why is because if students are allowed to search for definitions of words, what gray area does that imply? Can students then ask ChatGPT what a certain word means? By that logic, can they then ask ChatGPT to answer a question for them? Um, and based off of that line of reasoning, we decided that we're not allowing any sort of external help on this exam, including AI, online dictionaries, online web searches, et cetera. But please keep in mind, we have designed the open exam to be maybe even marginally 1% you know, uh, easier if you understand a word. There, there will not be a significant difference um, in terms of background knowledge. That's something that when I was onboarding, when our team was onboarding, uh, many of our, our professors and board of advisors, that was something that they also highly encouraged us to focus on was, you know, let's say a student is brand new to the field of researching physics. If they don't understand what certain terminology are, they shouldn't have a disadvantage in this Olympiad. Um, I assume that kids from different grade levels will participate. That's actually a great question. Um, yes, absolutely. We have students across 43 countries from a variety of different grade levels and ages and experiences in science research. Um, we actually don't believe that you know, we will end up seeing all 18 year olds, for instance, in the finals exam. We believe that we will see a lot of middle schoolers and younger students as well. So um, there are actually no differences in terms of difficulty or exam questions between grade levels. I think personally, as someone who did science research um, pretty, from a pretty young age, I believe that, you know, middle schoolers who are very, very passionate and interested in science research will be able to perform, you know, equally as well as, as, as a high schooler would. So um, I actually don't, you know, doubt that we will see uh, too much of a difference. Of course, it's going to be slightly skewed because there are more high schoolers participating, but I, I'm actually looking forward to see younger students uh, perform well in our Olympiad as well. Um, so uh, some final questions here before we finally move on to the last bit which is about some of the rules and regulations regarding the exam, although I have answered quite a few of them in this live stream already. Um, is there a, a, 
a way to annotate the paper within the platform? Uh, yeah, this is a, a great question that we've been receiving a lot. Um, we've actually disabled the ability to make comments or you know modify the, the research papers um, directly from the exam platform. Uh, the reason behind this is once again to avoid any sort of external help that students may have when taking the exam. Uh, what we do allow, however, is you know any sort of scratch paper. Uh, it is written on the exam that we encourage students to use an A4 letter-sized uh, sheet of paper. Um, you know we're not going to limit you on how much paper you decide to use uh, or what size of paper you decide to use. So please feel free to use any paper. Take notes throughout the papers. Uh, you know, let's say you, you need to say, oh, I need to come back to this question. You know, go ahead and write that down on your sheet of paper as well. If there's an app running in the background, will it make it seem like you're cheating? Uh, absolutely not. You know, our, our interface only control or only notices basically um, changes in the environment. So basically we encourage you not to switch to other tabs or, you know, close an app during the exam or open an app during the exam. Um, but, you know, ad block or something running in the background uh, should not make it much of a difference. However, um, that is something I was actually going to address in the, the final part of this live stream about important um, steps you need to take when, when actually launching up the exam environment. So uh, we will get to that in just a second. Would you rather suggest pacing yourself to get through all of the questions or slow down to understand and get questions right, even if not all of them are complete? Yeah, so this is a great strategy type of question. And something that I actually suggest is that students from the community share this information in the Discord. Um, something that was very kind of organic and amazing to see was that students actually created their own IRO prep Discord server. Um, shout out to whichever student decided to come up with that. Um, and students were discussing strategies and techniques that they're using in the exams, which is really exciting to see. Um, and so I would advise actually that students discuss among themselves what strategies work best for them. Me personally, I would personally go for, you know, the speed sort of route, just because as someone who is more familiar with, who practiced a lot, right, who has done a lot of the research papers, if I was in, in your spot, um, I would be like, you know, I, I've read through a lot of these research papers, I've done a lot of practice, I've done all of the mock exams, I'm confident that I'll be able to answer a lot of the questions, so I'm going to try to go faster and get through all of them. Um, you know, a student who is, you know, uh, last day kind of studying, maybe you want to focus more on, on getting specific questions right. But once again, you know, we may end up seeing completely opposite strategies or it, it is up to students. And we're, and we're very curious to see what the meta scene of the International Research Olympiad looks like, what strategies and techniques students come up with over time. Um, yeah, so uh, I, I think we will get into the third section. Uh, but before that, I do want to briefly talk about um, the finals experience and awards and what we're planning um, in, that, in that respect. Um, so first, let's talk a little bit about uh, finals. So um, the finals exam of the International Research Olympiad is planned to be hosted at Harvard University in late May. So if you are very driven and you think you're going to make it to finals, which I you know, hope all of you do well, I hope to see an amazing curve that it's like, wow, these students really killed it. Um, then, you know, you should start planning accordingly. Uh, we will be providing accommodations at the very least to students, that is hotels, foods, uh, you know, transportation within the city of Boston, touring, uh, you know, we'll, we'll like cater food and, and a venue for all the students and everything like that. Uh, we are still working with sponsors as well as uh, tabulations of our expenses and hiring judges and things like that to see whether or not we will be able to fly out students. Um, that is, of course, a, you know, a much higher cost. And as, as an Olympia that's running for the first year, this is something that we're, we're actively grappling with. Uh, but at the very least, we can assure that finalists will receive accommodations. And we're really hoping to offer that those flights as well to students. Um, now, that being said, what can you expect from the in-person finals experience? Um, I mean, I'm super excited for it personally. Uh, you know, as someone who competed in a lot of science competitions in, in middle school and high school, um, I'm talking competitions such as the 3M Young Scientist Challenge, uh, the Broadcom Masters or Thermo Fisher Junior Innovators Challenge, International Science and Engineering Fair, National Junior Science and Humanities Symposium, Science Bowl, you know, uh, other sorts of competitions as well at the, at the regional level in particular. I'm very familiar with what, you know, sort of like a residential kind of in-person experience should look like. 
and we have a student board of advisors on the International Research Olympiad team. Um, and many of these students, just like myself, have competed in these science fairs and have gathered an amazing experience of what it looks like and what's most fun. So we're actually in the process of planning out an itinerary with the help of our student board that should be the most fun possible. We wanna you know, provide ample opportunities to students in terms of professional and career development, in terms of networking and getting to talk with professionals or tour labs or things like that. But at the same time, we really want students to have an enjoyable time. We want them to walk away with lifelong friends that they've made just from this short weekend. And so you know, we're not gonna be doing some you know simple icebreaker games that may be fun for a business environment we're rather going to be doing really cool activities i don't want to spoil too much but very nice activities for students who do qualify for finals um then uh, a, a little bit more about awards um that is still also um you know kind of a surprise and and, and is in the uh, process of being finalized as well um, for what our, our gold silver and bronze uh, medalists will be receiving but in addition to that, um, we, you know, due to the overwhelming response in terms of the students that registered and all of that, we do want to make sure that students do walk away with at least some form of, I guess, uh, appreciation for research and, and or continue to, you know, next year participate in things like that. So we will be offering some form of certificate to students. Um, so we will, you know, circulate some more information about that uh, participation certificate, as well as kind of mastery and, and approval awards for students that rank in, let's say, the top decile or, you know, top 20 or top 25 percentile or things like that. So um, some very exciting awards in that respect for students who love, you know, prestigious things or, you know, like to uh, get bragging rights in, in that respect. So super excited for that. Um, finally, let's talk about the exam itself. So uh, just for a second here, I'm actually gonna switch to a blank screen. Um, if you can see the blank screen, then in the Discord, in the general channel, please type the word blank. If you can see this blank screen right now and you can't see the rest of my screen, please type the word blank in the general channel of the Discord. I see one student who has said the word blank in the Discord. Uh, are there more students? I think it may be, oh, there we go, yes. So um, great, uh, it looks like there's a lot of students who are able to now see my blank screen. And during this period of time, I am now going to log into the IRO examination website and walk you through exactly uh, what it looks like. So um, excuse me while I log in, I just don't wanna show someone's credentials publicly as I will be logging into a random student's account. So uh, apologies if I am logging into your account right now. Um, okay. So uh, the exam interface is now ready. I'm going to turn this back on. Um, yes, so if you can now see the exam testing environment, once again, oops, uh, in the general channel of the Discord, uh, please type in the word yes in the general channel of, uh, of the Discord. Um, please type in the word yes. And I'm just going to wait here until I see some yeses. It looks like YouTube runs a few seconds delayed. Okay, perfect. So now you can see the new screen. Let's get into uh, this exam testing environment. Once you log in using the information that was sent to your email, you will see in the exam center tab, round opens for the 2024 IRO. And I'm going to read aloud this information to you all so there's no confusion whatsoever. There are going to be four research papers, each from a different discipline of science. Each section includes eight questions with increasing difficulty. Please keep this in mind. We don't want students to answer one or two questions and say, wow, I'm answering them really fast. Time to slow down now. Remember, the questions do increase in difficulty. Questions will reference both text and visuals and or images from the research papers. Each question offers four answer choices, that is A, B, C, and D, and you can change an answer um, during the exam time frame, meaning you can go back. 
Um, similarly, if you're unsure about a question, feel free to move on and answer the next one. Um, you will be given 60 minutes, and after 60 minutes, all of your answers will be locked. Your device's webcam and microphone will be accessed. All keystrokes, including mouse clicks, will be logged and reviewed by the IRO team. We have hired an extensive panel of judges who will be doing this. A stable internet connection is mandatory for the exam. Uh, familiarize yourself with the exam platform. That means log in uh, as soon as possible to avoid technical difficulties that you may encounter. Uh, please ensure that you're in a quiet space, you know, without any distractions, as well as you're not with other people. Uh, you may also use sheets of paper during the exam. No calculator will be required, and that is it. Uh, that being said, some extra things right here. Please be aware of this. Leaving the exam screen will result in expulsion from the examination, so please be very careful with this. Our system has been fine-tuned. You know, our team has extensively tested this to detect suspicious behavior, including screenshots, copy-pasting text, and things like that. So just please be careful, you know, there's no point of invalidating your exam over the potential of improving your score of one or two points. Um, and yes, once the exam period begins at 8 p.m. EST today, you will see the start exam and you will be able to press it. Um, further, tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. EST, you will also be able to press the start exam button. Um, and you are only required to take, and you are encouraged to only take it once. Please do not take it more than once. Um, now some final words of advice. Someone was asking about uh, an extension for Chrome extensions. I would highly recommend in terms of uh, the technology that you're using for this exam, stick to you know, a familiar browser. There's a lot of new ones coming out today, but please you know, use something that would work, so, such as Safari, Chrome, Firefox, one of the more popular ones. Um, Chromium-based browsers such as you know, Google Chrome as well as Microsoft Edge are encouraged. Um, and furthermore, we do encourage you to potentially disable any sort of extensions such as ad blocks or pop-up blockers or things like that that may hinder your ability to take the exam. Um, so that being said, do we have any final questions in the live stream Q&A over here? Uh, feel free to ask away and um, I'll be able to answer the last few questions. Okay, everyone, uh, so it looks like we're getting some additional questions here. Based on the increasing difficulty, should we start with the last ones? Um, once again, we encourage students to come up with their own strategy. I would encourage you to look at other standardized tests. For instance, the ACT test, where again, there is an increasing difficulty, for instance, in the mathematics section. Some students like to start at the end, some students like to start at the beginning. It is up to personal preference, and we're not going to encourage you to do one thing over the other. Um, I am speaking on behalf of the Research Olympiad here, not based off of my own personal feedback, if that makes any sense. Um, can we use Command F? Uh, command F is actually disabled, so you will not be able to do that. Qu can we qualify if we didn't do any practice? Um, we will be sending a survey to students who, uh, all the students who end up taking the exam, um, and we're curious to know, you know, what the average score was for students who studied versus didn't study, and if there was correlations with that, so that we can improve our curriculum for the semifinal stage and for future years of the exam. That being said, it's hard to say if you can qualify if you didn't do any practice yet uh, based, based on the fact that I don't have data available for that, that piece. But I would say that there is likely a chance that students who are you know, very familiar can still qualify. Um, are calculators permitted? I actually just went over that question. Calculators are not permitted as per the exam rules right here. No calculator will be, well, it's, it actually says no calculator will be required. Um, I would advise you not to waste your time with a calculator. It will not help you if you've seen the mock exams. Um, I, I don't really see how a calculator could help. 
what measures are taken to discourage cheating? Um, our team has been working on this for the last several months, and we do believe we have kind of a foolproof, comprehensive system to catch any sort of cheating. Um, and in addition to cheating, just whatever students are doing at, at the time. And um, we, we believe that we will be able to catch pretty much all students who are not following the rules. And we just don't believe that it's in students' best interest to cheat on an academic contest in terms of their own academic ability with respect to their school. You know, of course, um, our exam is, is being administered on an international level. And with that comes some responsibility to ensure that our students who take part of this exam are not cheaters, if that makes any sense. And so we do really want to, you know, work on eliminating that, that amount of cheating. Um, and so it, it looks like that uh, there, there may not be any more questions that haven't been answered. I would highly encourage all students to um, visit the IRO website, the rules and regulations part of the IRO website, as well as uh, please go ahead and view the um, actual uh, exam website where you can take the exam as it has a lot of rules and additional proctoring information in that section. And that will be able to help you. Um, with that, I'm going to go ahead and end the live stream. I wish you all the best of luck with the 2024